Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee here. Weather in five, five days and five minutes. So this Monday morning, the 16th of May, 2022. And uh, just want to give you a heads up that tonight's Joe and Joe Weather Show, we're going to air it at 5 p.m. Eastern time so that it syncs up with the uh, severe weather that will be moving through the northeast uh, during uh, the evening rush hour drive. So just uh, uh, wanted to give you a heads up on that. 5 p.m. Eastern time instead of the usual 7.30. So we're setting up for this uh, severe weather that we've been talking about uh, on and off for the past week. Uh, the threat is uh, going to be a robust one, I think, in terms of production and showers and thunderstorms. And uh, there is tornado risk here, too. Uh, you can see around the Great Lakes, uh, we're looking at uh, this uh, upper trough. And one of the things that's happening is with this is, uh, well, two things. One is that the upper trough... Uh, sometimes lags the cold front. Sometimes it can lag the cold front by as much as a day. Uh, this upper trough and cold front are, are, are rather synced up well. Uh, and uh, that uh, gives uh, the atmosphere an extra added boost as far as instability is concerned ahead of it. And uh, the other thing is that the trough is actually going to be strengthening as it moves into upstate New York and New England right at the time that the cold front's coming through today. So I'm really expecting that this is going to produce some uh, strong thunderstorms this afternoon uh, once they get into uh, development in Pennsylvania. And actually, the arm that is on the radar as of 7 a.m. that is in Ohio and western PA... Uh, not too shabby for this time and uh, this time of the day, uh, and we're going to see these storms uh, by m noon time actually fire up uh, quite sharply across uh, west central Pennsylvania, and then they'll begin their move on uh, to the east. Uh, just a quick check of the radars elsewhere. It's not really a whole lot happening. There's some scattered showers uh, a little bit further to the east in Pennsylvania. Going to have to wait and see whether we. Sometimes we can get renegade thunderstorms that form out ahead of a, the uh, the main line. I think that's a possibility. But uh, if that's going to happen, it'll probably wait till after lunchtime or early afternoon to see those uh, fire up. So we'll be keeping be keeping eyes on the radar. Uh, Otherwise, uh, it's it's fairly quiet across the uh, rest of the mid middle and south Atlantic states down into Florida, other than what's off the Florida east coast. Uh, a little bit of activity off the Louisiana Gulf Coast and some scattered activity on up in the northwest. So uh, this is the overnight updated forecast from the Storm Prediction Center. They'll be issuing an update by 9 a.m. Eastern Time, and I will be updating that uh, on my uh, on my website and in the dayside website. Uh, weather update on uh, that that I that I put out so uh, we still have this enhanced risk running from upstate New York uh, most of uh, e the eastern and central Pennsylvania into northwestern New Jersey and also in southwestern New Jersey basically the line the enhanced line is just to the west of New York City uh, down into the Delmarva Peninsula and going into northeastern Virginia slight risk extending down into North Carolina so that's a fairly extensive area of risk and also seeing risk today uh, in uh, parts of the southwest in West Texas and in northeastern New Mexico the tornado risk is 2 to 5%. There's a fairly large area of 5%. They made it a bit bigger on the overnight forecast. And uh, the wind, uh, is they're actually uh, giving a 45% probability of winds of 50 knots or higher. And I think the reason for that is the fact that this is going to be a fast-moving line. There's a lot of momentum uh, with this uh, line moving from west to east. And you have to factor that in as far as the winds are the concern or the actual motion of the thunderstorms themselves. Uh, so uh, the idea that there could be some very strong wind gusts of 50 knots or higher over a large area uh, is, um, I think, is is well founded. And you've got a 30 to 50, you know, the 30 percent even is pretty far to the north. You often don't see Usually you see 15, sometimes you see 30, uh, 45 doesn't come up uh, all that often. And uh, also a 15% chance that you could see um, one inch of diameter of hail or larger uh, for this area, that's that's uh, that's also not a shabby number. As far as rainfall is concerned this week, uh, in uh, New England, the coastal New England down to about New York City, so the, as you go to the east, we're looking at, a half an inch or less, in some cases a quarter of an inch or less, and then you see higher amounts uh, as you uh, go inland of the coast of uh, three quarters of an inch to a, an inch and a quarter. We probably will have another cold front late this week that will produce some showers and storms. 
And uh, the other area of rain is going to be over Florida. Looks like uh, several inches of rain could be uh, in store for Florida during the next seven days across the lower Ohio Valley, three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half, maybe even a little bit more in spots, and on up into the northern plains of the Pacific Northwest. A few places in the southwest may see a little bit of rain in the coming week. Uh, still not well, it's still pretty dry just about everywhere, but we're starting to see a little bit of precip there. So uh, let's look at the, uh, this is the HRRR, and what I'm showing here, these are uh, CAPE values. Uh, they're a measure of instability. The higher the CAPE value, the more unstable the atmosphere is. And if we roll through the, the uh, map, uh, you'll notice uh, that purplish area that uh, blossoms out during the day today over Pennsylvania to New Jersey and the lower Hudson Valley and then on southward down into Virginia and eastern North Carolina. Uh, those are uh, numbers, in, in, rather than get into the actual details, it's you know 1,000 to 1,500 of the values. That's fairly high, particularly for the, uh, the uh, northern mid-Atlantic and points northward. So the models are all showing, no matter which one I pull up, it's all going to show a very unstable atmosphere. And uh, I, I think the HRRR has the right idea with this sort of squall line uh, that forms. And you see how quickly... You know, this is at uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 3, 4, 5, it's in western New Jersey. And that's why we moved up the time of the Joe and Joe weather show. And then 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, 10, 11, midnight. So uh, that is a, uh, that, that, that's a, a, a pretty fair rate of speed. It looks like these storms are going to be moving at about 40 miles an hour plus, or at least the squall line is going to be moving at 40 to 50 miles an hour uh, as it swings on through uh, the northeast. So uh, watch your timing. As you I said, I'll go over it again. So this is at 2 p.m. You can see that the line is just moving into eastern Pennsylvania, 3, 4, 5 p.m. into western New Jersey, extending down into Delaware. Uh, there's a secondary line of storms behind it uh, that forms. That'll probably uh, wind up weakening as we uh, head to sunset. This is at 6 o'clock, uh, reaching uh, uh, the uh, Massachusetts New York State line, the Connecticut New York State line, and then running offshore. Now, as far as the immediate coast of southern New England, there's always with the marine layer this time of year, and these storms could weaken. The upper trough might compensate the fact for some degree, so we'll just have to watch to see what the radar produces. Now, very quickly, since I'm already, you know, past the five minutes, which to those of you who see this regular, regularly, that's no huge surprise. Uh, so... Uh, after this goes by, we should be fine for tomorrow and Wednesday, other than clouds mixing in with some sun. That'll be the biggest problem we have. And temperatures will be a, a little cooler. Might be a little breezy tomorrow, upper 60s and low 70s for Tuesday and Wednesday. We have a disturbance that's come, approaching for Wednesday evening with some showers. Uh, that'll go by. It'll transition us slowly into a warmer and more humid air mass as we move through the end of the week and into the weekend, which I think is going to be a very warm weekend. For the first time, we're going to see a warm weekend in, in what's got to go back to last fall. We're going to put together, um, uh, and certainly for the first time this spring, I think we're going to put together two days that are other than the isolated shower that might pop up, should be on the dry side. And uh, then uh, temperatures uh, in many areas probably climbing up uh, into the 80s. So I think that will be welcome. And there's the next cold front that approaches for Sunday night. Uh, and there'll probably be some severe weather risk with that well to the west. Because it looks like the storms may wind up falling apart before they get here. Okay, so it's all going to be about severe weather today. Uh, the Joe and Joe Weather Show, 5 o'clock. Eastern time. So we'll be on early and uh, we will see you then. And I'll update uh, whatever SPC, if they update the uh, forecast, I will pass that update along uh, also.